From the high desert and the great American Southwest, I bid you good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world's 25 time zones, covered like a nice warm blanket and baby in the desert, it's cold out there. This program, Midnight in the Desert, my name is Art Bell and I have breaking news coming up for you. First, the rules of the program. It's Friday night. It's open lines. So, no bad language, one call per show, two drink minimum. As always, I want to thank uh, my group, Telos, Joe Talbot, right here in Pahrump, Keith, my webmaster, Heather Wade, my producer. If you've got something you want produced, meaning a guest, (laughs) send it to producer at artbell.com. That's producer at artbell.com. Then we have stream guys uh, who distribute like crazy, although they haven't been arrested yet. LV.net, sales, Pete Everhart, TuneIn Radio, news with Amy Martin, of course, and my dear wife, Erin, and, of course, Asia. All right. We do have breaking news. Um, you know, I've been doing this show a long, long time, decades, right? A show, I guess I had to put it that way. And in my career, I really had always hoped for this kind of breaking news. This is just like the speech I gave for Tabby's Star, right? Which, by the way, is still every bit as much Tabby's Star as it was. NASA has a theory, as we mentioned a long time ago, about comets, But that's all it is, a theory. They still don't know any more than they knew before about whether they're megastructures or not. Something to keep in mind. New breaking news tonight. Did scientists just pick up the first intelligent radio waves from a distant alien planet? This comes from the Express. Listen very closely. The fast radio bursts included one double signal never heard before, and have astronomers buzzing with excitement over the possibility of it being a message with alien origins. Only 11 of the unidentified transient uh, radio pulses have ever been recorded uh, before around the world. I've got it up on rbell.com now, and it is the uh, curious new double blast, which was accompanied by four singles, which has baffled astronomers analyzing data now from the Parkes Radio Telescope in New South Wales, Australia. Emily Petroff from uh, Swiss Bern University in Melbourne, one of the team who discovered these signals, believes the origin could be more remarkable than anything recorded before. She tweeted, we have no idea what's going on, but we know it's definitely something cool. The Parks Observatory in Australia picked up the signals. The discovery is being compared in significance to the recording of the WOW signal, a strong narrow-band radio wave found by Jerry Elman in 1977. That radio burst picked up by the Big Ear Radio Telescope of Ohio State University in the U.S. bore all the expected hallmarks of a non-terrestrial origin, but has not been detected since. Right. If you want to read more about this, and there's a lot more to read, uh, you're going to want to. You really are going to want to go to my website, arpel.com, and read this. Just breaking. Again, did scientists pick up? Just pick up the first intelligent radio waves from an alien planet, or in ham speak, Sirius DX, folks. The uh, fast radio bursts included one double signal never heard, of course. Um, blah 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 blah. Let me see what is the new stuff here. Definitely something cool. The discovery is being compared, yes, again, to the wow signal. And they think that it could be extraterrestrial in origin. Could be a billion miles away. But it's a very, very strong signal, or group of signals, more accurately said. 
So, <laughs> uh, once again, uh, we have breaking news in the category that I had always hoped to be able to read to you. Now, that doesn't mean that this is it. But when they compare the signal uh, at a major university, a major radio telescope in Australia to the wow signal, only a lot bigger wow, um, I would say that uh, this qualifies as the second big story to break on my short watch here on Midnight in the Desert. I'm sure other radio telescopes are going to be quickly uh, honing in and seeing what they hear. But this is a big one. Scientists at major universities and major telescopes like Parks don't make these statements without cause, without thinking really, really hard about it before they say it. So if you want to read the story, it's just beginning, really. It's just breaking. Uh, you know, on the Express right now, we'll see where the story goes, but it's a big story. I'm telling you. And we're breaking it here. And anyway, um, so there is that. Uh, again, we're going to open lines. If you have a comment on that, if you have an early comment on it, you're certainly welcome to make it. There was an all-day-long, it seemed like, standoff with a gunman in Colorado Springs in a Planned Parenthood uh, building shooting at people, hitting people. And so they got him. They got him alive this time. It could be a political statement. It could be just a crazy person. You never know. There's so much of this stuff going on now. You never know, right? The annual ritual of Black Friday, as we know it, is over now. The frenzied shoppers are gone. But this year, not as many of them went. How many of you put off Black Friday this year? Just didn't go. Decided, eh, I'll wait for Cyber Monday. That's what I think is going on. I really think that uh, Cyber Monday is where most people are doing their biz now. And I wonder how it's going to change America, don't you? I mean, if you can sit at home on your computer and you can get a better deal than you get by going to a brick-and-mortar store and fighting with other people about grabbing whatever is grabbable, then that's probably what you're going to do, and that's what people are doing, and it's just going to change the landscape of America, I think. What's going to happen to big shopping malls? You know what people are doing, I've heard, and I bet a lot of you do it too, You go to a shopping mall, you find what you like, because you can look at things and, you know, put hands on, right? And then you go on the net and find a better price and order it there, maybe with free shipping and no tax if you're lucky. And then there is this person on the wormhole tonight, Art. Make, who is this person? Adam, by the way. All right, make the change to Windows 10. Join us. I know you're afraid, but trust me, it's better. Once you've made the change, you will feel better, too. We're waiting for you. We'll all be together. We'll all be happy. That's Adam. Sounds like something out of the body snatchers to me. (laughs) <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare open lines. Anything you want to talk about is fair game. Anything goes, literally. I have, uh, earlier today, I made a suggestion on my Facebook site that people suggest what they would like to hear for open lines, special open lines. Just one line, right? And I have a lot of suggestions here. Actually, over 300 of them came in in a matter of hours. (laughs) So I have picked four for our one uh, special line. 
These four are the following. A weird addiction line. That's right. Lots of people have weird addictions. When I was in high school, I, uh, I ate erasers. And I guess you could call that a weird addiction. I never had erasers on my pencil. Therefore, when I went to a race, I usually scratched the paper in school. Mmm, erasers. That taste, as an adult, has faded. <laughs> so, we've got the weird addiction line added to that. I uh, have decided to take somebody's suggestion and open the I Hate Art Bell line. That's right. Somebody suggested an I Hate Art Bell line, so fine. If you hate me, call the number I'm going to give out here shortly. Another is the soulless people line. If you are a person with no soul, no soul, when they were giving them out or whatever, they missed you. If you're one of those people, you're going to want to call the soulless line. And finally, and not to be ignored to be sure, the shapeshifters line. Now, this is only if you are a, dare I say, legitimate shapeshifter. That's hard to say. Shapeshifter, shapeshifter, shapeshifter. Uh, so, again, in addition to general craziness, we have the weird addiction line, the I hate Art Bell line, the soulless people line, and the shapeshifters line. And the numbers for everything are as follows. I call this the talk. Sorry. Our national number is area code 952-225-5278. Easy, right? That's 952-CALL-ART. Now, if you would like to come to us via the cool way, and you've got a really good connection in Skype, then come on. It's easy. Put Skype on your phone. Android or Apple, or whatever, actually. It's free to download, and then, you know, add us as a contact. We are MITD51. That's in North America only, MITD51. Now, outside the country, outside North America, that is, it's MITD55. That's Midnight in the Desert, MITD, case doesn't matter. Uh, five five, and wherever you are in the world, you can call us for free. Okay, let's see. We have a couple of more numbers to give out, and then we're underway. That is the first time caller line. In case you have never called the show, never, never have called the show. That number is area code seven seven five two eight five fifty eight hundred. Seven seven five two eight five fifty eight hundred. I wonder if we're about to actually make contact. It sure does feel like it. The special line, the four special things you can do, would be at area code five seven five two zero eight seven seven eight seven. So, if you have a weird addiction, if you hate me, if you don't have a soul, or you're a shapeshifter. You can call area code 575-208-7787. I think that about sums it up and sets up a pretty wild night. Actual radio contact out there? Seriously. Somebody calling themselves Wild Card Line is going to be on the air on Skype. Hello. Hello, Art. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you for making it, sir. What a night, huh? That is in really fancy to hear about a signal being found. Exciting. Yeah, Parks, uh, being, Parks Telescope in Australia. So, wow, indeed. The, the one thing that seems a little odd is they say it's several billion light years away and probably from another galaxy, so that has to be a pretty powerful signal. Very, very powerful. Well, I, I just was calling in to say that. It sounds like you have a lot of lines going tonight, so thanks for taking my call. 
You sure you don't want to try to fit in under one of those categories? You're not a shapeshifter, are you? Well, my guess is you may have a few more people calling and claiming to be your mouse today, but yeah, I, yeah. I'm not going to make such a claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, any weird addiction, sir? No, no, not that I know of. Do you hate me? Absolutely not. I've no. enjoyed listening to you. I listened to you a little bit streaming <laughs> on the internet from um, Los Angeles over the weekend. And it, oh man, did you hear from LA, huh? Uh, I, I I I live in Virginia. Okay, but I was just streaming it on the internet. Uh huh. KBC. I did. It was yeah. good hearing you on a radio station. I use, usually use the TuneIn app. Oh, and yeah. it makes me glad to be a time traveler and not having to listen to ads most of the time. Uh, there you have it. Uh, nevertheless, glad to have you along live, and thank you for the call. Thanks, Art. Right, take care. Sure, it is big news. I mean, think about it. In all the years that I did a show, wherever it was, we never once, not even once, got a signal that would qualify up in the WOW signal territory. And now in the span of, what, a month, we have had two giant indications of alien life. No, possible alien life. Let me be clear, possible alien life. This uh, one from Parks Telescope is a biggie, just as Tabby's star is a biggie. So, you know, we're talking about serious stuff here. Maybe we are beginning to discover intelligent life out there. Let's go to my uh, very, very special line and say, hello there, you're on the air. Hi, Art, my name's Joey from Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach. And which of my four categories would you like to address? I have a really weird addiction. Okay. How All right. Uh, in, the pa- in the past, I've had a problem with drugs and alcohol, but I gave all of that up, uh, and it really kind of occurred to me that uh, I have a very strange addiction to anything that has to do with uh, post apocalyptic Well, then you must be a movie fana- fanatic because, man, they sure make a lot of movies about it, don't they? Yeah, they do. But uh, to me, to be honest, I'm not sure if I can give you the, a book that I've read. I've read it over 14 times. Uh, have you ever heard of Piers Anthony? Yes. The writer? Yes, you, know, you, uh, you just picture yourself, sir. Where where are you calling from? Uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona Beach. Okay, so picture yourself uh, somehow making it to a Miami that is now nothing but a nub of its former self. All the buildings trashed to about one quarter of their size. Um, nothing but tangled wreckage in the streets. Few people running around on motorcycles like Mad Max, like that, huh? Uh-huh. That's exactly. post, post-apocalyptic, for sure. Yes, sir. So. I'm actually addicted to a video game right now. Oh. Uh, radiation, mutants, and. That says it all. Weapon. Yeah. Yes, sir. Says it all. Um, so you spend a lot of time, uh, do you actually wish that the world was like that? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, God. I'm, I'm going to have to take that out. Mad Max-like stuff. How about that? Like stuff. Yes, sir. You, you actually want that? Yes, sir, I do. You, you wouldn't miss the police in case you have an emergency or the fire department in case you have a fire? No, sir, not at all. So let me dig in a little further here. I, I get the feeling that if the apocalypse, ap- apocalypse came, that you would be one of the first out on the street causing mayhem. No, not causing mayhem. I would actually probably be a defender of people. The center of people? Yeah, the defender. Oh, the defender, defender of people. So you would be a defender of the apocalyptic criminals. Not the criminals, but those being oppressed by the criminals. Those being oppressed by... Well, okay, that's fair. Yeah, there wouldn't be any police, so you would essentially be a, a cop. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. So you would have to create that which you just saw destroyed to help people. Pretty, yeah, yes, sir. That's pretty weird. Pretty weird, sir. Yes, sir. 
All right. Thank you uh, very, very much for the call, and it does indeed qualify as weird. He would like a post-apocalyptic world, one in which there'd be Mad Max stuff going on, right? And one in which he could participate by probably putting on a cloak of some sort, uh, perhaps with a big A on the chest, and run around and save you all from what would be coming. First time caller line, you are on the air. Hello. Mad Max stuff going on, right? Hello. Going once. Going twice. Washington. I know you're in Washington. Hello. Hello, how are you? I turn your uh, device down and off, please. See, that's in the past. Sounds like about 30 seconds in the past. Can you get it turned off? Um, yeah, I can. T- I can turn my phone off. Yeah. Not your. F- Who were you talking to a minute ago when I called you with my phone? Is not me. Um. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, you you've got your radio on or your device in the background, and that's interfering with things. Ah, uh, that's you, <laughs> and somebody else that was talking to you. No, no, there's nobody on but you, sir. <sighs> Oh, darn. Oh, darn. He figured it out. Yeah. It's it's still going. There you go. No, still going. How's that? Way better. It, it took the better part of a minute, though. Oh, yeah, I just got up and went and turned it off. Sorry, this evening. What, what should I talk about? What, what, what? You're asking me what you want to talk about? Well, yeah, because I was listening to someone else talking to you on the radio and That's on my phone. because there's a delay, which you ignored and drove me nuts. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to drive you nuts. <laughs> yeah, see, you were listening to like 30 seconds in the past. So what you and I say right now will not appear in people's ears until perhaps as much as 30 seconds later. Kind of time travel. Isn't that awesome? Um, fairly awesome. Anyway, you're here now, so surely you had something on your mind when you dialed. Yeah, actually, I did. Uh, you were talking about which uh, different conspiracy theory, I guess, basically, if I remember cor- correctly, and I was doing some postal exam work and stuff. So I'm new to the Shelton area. Okay. So I All right, so thought I'd... Do you do you mean one of my special lines? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I'm I'm not either one of them. I'm just a human being, you know. Prove. United States citizen with a social security number. Prove it. Okay, so how do I do it? Do I need to go show you my social security <laughs> number? <laughs> no, God, no! Don't give it out. Okay. Uh, we've got four special lines. Uh, you could comment on any of those things. Do you hate me? No, not at all. No, you seem okay. like a really nice guy. <laughs> are, are you without a soul? Are you a person without a soul? Oh, no, we got a soul. We uh-huh. got a soul. You got a soul. I got a soul. Oh, uh-huh. good. All right, good. Um, do you occasionally shapeshift into something else? I, You know, I, I thought about it, and then I just thought that's just insane. Insane. Okay, so here's the one that's got to be for you. I mean, surely you are addicted to something. Ooh, that's thinking, scary. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm addi- you know what I'm addicted to? What? People. I enjoy being social. Really? Yeah, isn't that weird? It, uh, it is, because I consider myself basically antisocial. Really? I mean, especially <laughs> with the job that you have, right? <laughs> especially with the job that I have, actually, sir, yes. I'm yeah. kind of antisocial. Oh, well, I mean, as in, like, getting out in the community, maybe, or what? Because, I mean, you're definitely verbalizing a lot out there. Um, well, that's true, and people don't understand it. You know, I do a a radio program. I talk to potentially five people, right? And, um, right. So people don't get it. You know, in real life, I'm pretty, I wouldn't say antisocial. Well, yeah, I am antisocial. Kind of antisocial. It's like... Well, I mean, you know, that's your opinion, and we all have those 
what is the actual what what, what do they say there? there's there's an expression right uh that visitors like fish after three days start to stink <laughs> Ooh. pretty pretty antisocial right uh, are you? Are you, I don't know. I can't smell you over the phone. We have AT and T. AT and T will have smell of, uh phones shortly. I'm sh- sure. Are you sure? I figured it would be smell Verizon. That, that actually, but now that I think about it, it'd be horrible. Or do you think Verizon will beat them to it? Uh, you know, due to the fact that AT and T basically owns everything that um, Verizon yeah. uses, so yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they yeah. now own Direct TV too. Oh wow! You didn't know that? TV? No, uh, I didn't AT- know that. AT and T eight gobbled up Direct TV. Oh, I bet. <laughs> well, think about it. They're the ones that put all the power lines in in order to even put it, get it to where we're going. You know, so. Well, they put the phone lines in. Power company did the power. All right, sir. Thank you uh, very much for the call, and great to hear from you. So when we got to addiction, I heard him stumble severely. Now, he may not have laid it out all on us, but apparently there was something there. So, yes, we have four different lines. The weird addiction line, the I hate our bill line. Don't be afraid now. Make the call. The soulless people line and the shapeshifters line. And that number is uh, area code 575-208-7787. That's 575-208-7787. Seven seven eight seven. Let's go to Sunny on Skype. Hello, hello, Sunny. Sunny, Sunny, are you there? I hear you. Uh, Sunny apparently has left the room. Now I'm trying to be patient tonight. I'm actually waiting for people, not giving them the usual going once, going twice. Gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, up to the state of Washington we go, and you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hello, Art. Hi. Hi. Art, I was going to say last night they had a replay of your first show of Graham Hancock and oh. Oh, yes. Crystal Gale, and I so enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, we are That's glad to have put that on, and uh, it was a good show. It was kind of nice to hear Crystal again, huh? Oh, wasn't it fun? I, I, that's the first time I heard it, because I didn't know you were back on the air for, for, oh, I guess I caught you maybe in October, early October, and I uh-huh. had no, or maybe September. I had no idea. I missed a couple months there, and this was just a delight. Thank you for doing that. You're most welcome. Um, it, now, would you like to uh, comment on any of my weird lines? No, I can't fit into one of those tonight. <laughs> Almost <laughs> everybody has an addiction, though. Yeah, I can't think of any of my addictions. I've, I've had to give up alcohol. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I had to give that up. And I don't smoke pot yet, although it's legal here now. So maybe that will come into my life again. Hey, by the way, how is that working out up in Washington? You know, I think it's working out okay. I am just not uh, – I haven't seen any situations of anybody abusing it. Only a couple of times I've – I've seen people uh, sort of fall asleep in the slow traffic, um, you know, oh, at a bad. stoplight or approaching yeah. a stoplight, and they fall asleep. And I don't, you know, you don't know nowadays whether to go up and sort of like you don't want to beep at them because they get angry, and so you you know you sit there and you're thinking, well, now, and they begin slowing down when they're traveling, and that when they're doing that, I'll I'll beep at them to get their attention, but. I think they're probably on pot or something. Yeah, you, you know, or maybe keep a gun at them, and these days they're liable to draw a gun on you. Well, you never know, you know. So, so I just usually, if they're if they're still moving, I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and beat at them to help them wake up. But if they're sitting there, I no, don't no. generally beat at them. All right. Know, well, listen, I got a break. I got a break. So, Take thank care, you for the call, and I appreciate the fact that you like the show. In the nighttime. On yet another night with a contact story, this is Midnight in the Desert. Now I stand here helplessly, hoping you get into me. I am so into you.
take a walk on the wild side of midnight. From the kingdom of Nye, this is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please call the show at 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Or North America gets us on Skype at MITD51. Internationally, MITD55. And we have, in addition to everything else, all the normal craziness. Serious breaking news tonight. Uh, a possible alien signal uh, being received at the Parks Radio Telescope in Australia. Now, you're welcome to go read the story yourself at artbell.com. It doesn't say it is an alien signal. It says it could be. They actually use the word extraterrestrial. So we may be in a time, you know, when <laughs> I'm telling you what I have been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for virtually all my life may be in the process of coming true. And then let us not forget, along with everything else, if you have a weird addiction you'd like to cop to, if you hate my guts, if you are a soulless person, be interested in talking to a person who doesn't think they have a soul, and or a shapeshifter, then you can call our special line designed for any of those weirdnesses. It is area code 575-208-7787. Now, I blew right through the break in the first half hour, so I'll take care of it this half hour. But, boy, there is a lot of news cooking out there of just the kind that I love. I mean, I really, really love it. And I'm getting so many Skype calls that I cannot see who I'm about to be answering. They're actually covered up. I'm moving Skype calls as I speak. All right, Phantom, I believe it is. You're on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. How are you? Um, I'm just fine. What an exciting time. It is. Hey, I'm hoping you had a good Thanksgiving with your family. Um, everything's fine, uh, fortunately. Thank you. We're safe. That's good to hear. Well, you've got the four lines that you're doing tonight, but my story kind of falls outside of that. I don't know if you'd be up for a call about possession. Oh, absolutely. Are you, oh, sir, are you possessed? No, but in the past, uh, I have a friend that truly believes that I was possessed. Well, then maybe you were. What did your uh, friend, what did your, I mean, why did your friend come to believe this? Well, her and I were hanging out at my house one day. We were, I think we were about 14. And I don't really remember what happened, but she says I started slamming into the walls of the house. Mm. And saying weird things sounded like gibberish and just off the walls. Kept going up and down the stairs and... Well, and you know, I, I know that when I was 14, I was a little possessed. No question about it. But but I'm not sure it was a demon. In your case, it sounds like it well, could have been. Well, she... she uh, You might not like this part, but she refers to the... Whatever possessed me as red, because my eyes turned red. You're right. I don't like that. <laughs> she really said your eyes turned red? She did. Um, you know, okay, so if I was with a girl and her eyes turned red, I wouldn't be with her anymore. <laughs> now, are you still with this young lady? Her and I are still friends. Friends. Distant friends, like a call every now and then, maybe a Christmas card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a few years later, we were doing something, and just randomly I had a little cut on my hand. We yeah. don't know where it came from. Yes. And it just started bleeding, just a little little hole on the back of my hand. It has since healed, but it left us a very slight scar. And this just happened... Um, it was... About two years Spon after the well, possession. I'm, I'm saying p spontaneously, a uh, hole yeah. developed, and yeah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> Maybe you are possessed. No, well, I apologize for all the noise in the background. I have a 24-year-old cat that wants to get on your show. Aw. Oh, um, He's been with me all my life. I fully understand. Take good care of him. Uh, is it okay if I plug the community I'm listening with? Um, yes, it's fine. I am I am chatting with the people on SourceryNet IRC chat in the Art Bell channel. Way to go, sir. I, I thank you for the plug. And, uh, yeah, all of you, if you want to plug uh, the group, there are many groups out there that 
monitor, discuss, trash this show, uh, whatever it is they, they do, uh, you are more than welcome to plug them when you get on the air. But I'm expecting some serious weirdness tonight. So, if you have a weird addiction, if you hate me, especially if you hate me, if you are a person without a soul, <laughs> I know there's some of you out there, right? And or if you, from time to time, shape shift, then I want to hear from you. And we have a special number for that. Uh, that number is uh, area code 575-208-7787. And now I'm going to take the break that I did not take in the first half hour. I mean, when you have alien signals being received in Australia and so much more going on, you just don't have time for commercials. From the high desert and the great American Southwest, you're listening to Midnight in the Desert. On a Friday night, two drink max, I'm Art Bell. It's 2 a.m. Take a ride exclusively on the Dark Matter Digital Network. This is Midnight in the Desert with your host, Art Bell. To call Art, please dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. I think Aaron has it right. He sends through the wormhole, strange addiction. I'm addicted to searching for answers to paranormal questions. This is... What brings me to your show night after night? And I believe it's your addiction as well. Yes, uh, Aaron, it is. That is an <laughs> absolute addiction of mine. I cop to it, and uh, that's why I'm here. And boy, am I being fulfilled lately. First, we have Tabby's Star, and now, from Australia, we've got the possibility of, a, not the possibility of, it is what they're calling a wow signal or equivalent to the wow signal from the Parks Radio Telescope in Australia. So if you're just catching up on things, you're going to want to definitely catch up on that. Uh, Let's go to Monroe, Louisiana, I believe. Hello, on my strange line. Hello? You're talking about Monroe, Georgia? Georgia, yep, yep, Georgia. (laughs) Hey, Art. Um, This is probably a little closer to... uh, your form of things, but I have a weird addiction that started about five years ago. Did it start and, slowly, uh, or did it come on all at once? Slowly, okay. because uh, pretty much me and my wife split up, and instead of me going to some of my older addictions, I discovered ham radio. <laughs> That's a good addiction. And when I say the addiction, I mean... It does get in the way of my personal finances. I I am now addicted to building ten meter amplifiers. Um, ten is that ten or eleven meter? Let's just say ten. Well, let's say it, but I think you mean eleven. Well, you you know, if it works for ten, it works for eleven. Uh, well, yeah, there is that. I mean, generally, not always. Uh, some manufacturers uh put something in. By the way, you. I'm hearing myself in the background. Um, some manufacturers put put in something special so that those 11 meter guys can't use 10 meter amps. You know that, right? Right. So it work, won't work on AM. Uh, can you say treetop tall? <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. Well, you know, I, I can't help it. I mean, it's it's so bad that my own mother has seen me while I was asleep, literally building and soldering with my hands up in the air like I'm actually building an amplifier. And the only reason I hadn't got into the ones with, you know, multiple output filtering, because I just hadn't got that good yet. <laughs> 
Um, so tell me, sir, the world of CB these days, has it become more polite or has it descended into post-apocalyptic chaos? If you want to get to the polite, you go over to <clears throat> up above Channel 40. <laughs> And, uh, all right, I, you know I can't I can't honestly talk to you in all good faith. My brothers out there are listening. I know, <laughs> but uh, I have a love for both areas of the spectrum. We'll just put it that way. All right. Well, um, get get a license. <laughs> That's what I would say. Become a real ham. Um, join us. It'll be all right. Kind of like the the guy told me about uh, Windows 10. You will become happy. Uh, let's let's go to Matt. Hello, Matt. Hi, Art. Hi. Um, first things first. Yes. I have weird headphones. My audio plays back. Can you hear me fine? Like, can you hear yourself through it? I I hear you just great. All right, awesome. I have a strange addiction I'd like to tell you about. Fire away. I am addicted to something known as role playing. Are you familiar with Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of thing? Of course, yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you, this got started way back in high school. I'm a, I work nine to five. I have all this normal life. But when I get home, I get on the forums. I type up all this crazy stuff. I go in the woods with PVC swords and my buddies. It's crazy. feels like I'm ten, but it's amazing. I get it. No, I do get it. Um, it can really take over your life. You know that, of course, right? Oh, absolutely. I don't even want to get started. Well, well, you've already started, but I mean, well, it really yeah. can take over your life to the point where every spare minute, and and perhaps you're even trying to figure out a way to play at work. Oh, when I'm at work, I just think about getting home and playing my half elf ranger with a plus one bow. It it consumes my life. You have a plus one bow. I have a plus one bow in impressive. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, very impressive. I know. Um, and so you spend virtually every free minute. Down in the dungeon with the dragons. Absolutely. I don't think I'd change my life. It's fantastic. Do you think you'll ever get married? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, you know, if it was like the wife or Dungeons and Dragons, then what? I think I'd have to, when the time comes, I'd choose the wife. But if she's not into the whole thing like I am, it, it's not going to work. So... <laughs> Uh, maybe what you'll luck out and you'll meet this gorgeous gal online playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, man, that'd be amazing. But so, that sort of thing only happens in, you know, the games and the movies and that sort of thing. That's why you need a Dungeons and Dragons dating site. That sounds almost as bad as an idea of a uh, paranormal dating site, you know? <laughs> You said it, I didn't. Thank you for the call, sir, and uh, good luck with your, your. I was going to say life, and wife is what almost came out. Uh, I would say stay single, and uh, when, when the real time comes uh, and the real gal comes, you'll, you'll know it. Uh, okay, uh, you're now on the air on Skype. Hello there. Hi there. Hi. So I have a strange addiction. Uh, good. What is your strange addiction? So I collect pictures of this Japanese idol girl. I think I'm looking at her right now. Is she the gal on your uh, Skype? Yes. Uh-huh. Very pretty. She is. I have over, like, two gigabytes of pictures of her on my hard drive. Really? Yep. Um, do you have any plans to travel to Japan and try and see her in person? Yes, I do. That is a little odd, sir. Uh, what do you expect uh, your reception will be? Uh, or no, wait. What do you hope for? I hope to meet her in person. At least see her. And yeah. do, you, do you think she'll look one uh, time into your eyes and say? Ohio gozaimasu. <laughs> it would be nice. Um, well, uh, she's a pretty girl anyway, so there you go. Uh, yes. That is kind of an it's, it's. I don't want to say it's at the level of stalker, but I mean, if the police came in your house, would her picture be, like, plastered everywhere? 
Not quite. I do have a little tiny framed picture of her. It sits on my desk. Uh Uh-huh. It's very subtle, but, you know. I bet a lot of girls have that, you know, I don't want to say problem, but uh, maybe it's really a compliment. All right, sir. Well, listen, thank you very much, and she's gorgeous. Uh, Thank you. So good luck. Take care. I'm Art Bell. in the desert doesn't screen calls. We trust you, but remember, the NSA, well, you know. To call the show, please dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. In every way you can imagine, this is a cool night. We've got breaking news. The Parkes Telescope in Australia thinks they may have received a signal from an intelligent species. And I'll leave it at that. They do make that statement. Honestly, they do. If you want to read the story, go to artbell.com and read it. So this is the second gigantic story I've broken uh, in, I what, a, a month in this category. And I went for decades without breaking something like this on earlier programs. So I think... I, I, I think... I think it's exciting. <laughs> I think it is very, very exciting, actually. Then we have general open lines, anything goes, two drink max open lines. We have one special line, which you, I, I invite you to call. Weird addiction line. Been quite a bit of uh, response to that one so far. The I Hate Art Bell line. What other talk show host opens a line for people who hate him? The soulless people line. Of course, they would fit in with the I hate Art Bell line, but nevertheless. And then, of course, the Shape Shifters line. Uh, all of those can be responded to by calling. Area code 575. This is in Roswell, New Mexico, you know. Area code 575-208-7787. So your call is being routed through Roswell. 575-208-7787. Skype at MITD51 in the U.S., in Canada, MITD55 elsewhere on my, well, my multiple line, you're on the air. Uh, is this me? It is you, yes. It is me. I hate Art Bell because he has a two-drink maximum. <laughs> did you catch yourself Did you catch yourself at the beginning of the show when you gave the rules you said two-drink minimum? Uh, well, Yes, I know. Uh, there are some people who depend on my, my mistake every week for that and prove it later in the show. <laughs> and I am without a soul. You're without a soul. Every one of your listeners is without a soul. You do not have a soul. You are a soul. We don't do dot, dash, dot, or dot, 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 dash, dot, dash, dot, dot, dot. Is that SOS? Uh, um, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 yes. Right. Because we're saying save our spirituality, we're saying save our bodies. Save us. Well, no, we, we don't, no, they're saying save, save our souls. souls. Save. We are souls. Well, there were, how many isn't this a difference? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't this kind of like a difference without a distinction, sir? I mean... You're saying well, it is a matter of semantics, and 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 the reason that it's a matter of semantics is because it's an abused semantics. Did I say this was a line for semantics? You said it's a line for somebody without a soul. I don't possess a soul. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, fine. Um, I appreciate I'm your sneakiness of me. <laughs> Do you fit any of the other categories? I mean, you must have some. I'm going to cut that out. That's just, you know, the visual for that one is just... 
you, you're, you're, you're not you're, you're not really serious. More healthy. You're not serious. It's more healthy to squat. You are serious I'm thinking about that. About buying, yes, yes. There's a device now for sale. You can get it on the internet. The squatty uh, potty. And remember the name. The squatty potty. Yes. We've I actually it advertised it on this program. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and I will be ordering that. Uh, it'll make it a lot more convenient because. From hemorrhoids, and I found out it's because of the toilet. Ah, uh, well. And squatting was recommended to me. And uh, you can call it a weird addiction. Uh, oh, no, I, it's not that weird. Uh, I mean, you know, your alternative certainly is, but I had to bleep that out. What? Okay. No, I'm fine with that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, you know, the but, visual is yeah. just too much. All right, thank you very much for the call. Somebody once said to me, gentlemen, don't do that in the shower. And so that, that could give you some clue uh, as to why I bleeped it. Uh, hey, Brandon, hello there. Brandon, you're on the air. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's wow, crazy. right? <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thanks for taking my call, call Art. Uh, I'm uh, actually a newer fan of you. Um, I'm a time traveler as well. And... Um, yeah, I, I have a suggestion for a show first and uh, something like an experience to tell you about. Okay. First, my my suggestion for a show, I think it would be really cool if you did something on cults. Um, they're really fascinating. Um, I studied them a little bit in college. And, uh, you know, just about how people can manipulate uh, now you're breaking other up a people. Bit. And, I mean, have you you know, them to, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought of starting a cult? Uh, no, no. That would be that would be inhumane. That's not right. That's not cool. But um, okay. but yeah, you know, I actually heard you talk about uh, Jim Jones the other day on the show, and uh, I, I you know, personal personal belief is that that uh, Jim Jones and the whole uh, you know Jonestown thing was a conspiracy. But uh, I won't get into that. But just a suggestion for a show. There's lots of info about it. Okay. Um, wait, 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 wait. You can't leave it like that. What kind of conspiracy? Well, don't you find it odd that a thousand people would just kill themselves? <laughs> like, that to start. Well, if you study cults, you're going to find out why. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just think, uh, okay, well, first off, uh, the whole uh, Jonestown experience was, um, so basically in uh, Guatemala, um, um, a thousand people um, drank cyanide poison and killed themselves and. uh you know, it uh, it just uh, I don't know the experience. Uh, sorry, the whole situation just it's it's very fishy. It's like um, the senator Senator Ryan or there's a senator who went down to investigate the it. Congressman, then, I think yes. Yeah, yeah, congressman. Yeah, he went down and uh, to investigate it, and uh, then he ended up uh, getting killed while he was down there because that's people right. were you know feeding him notes that they wanted to leave. And, that's right. Yeah, that's just one example of a cult, but they're really fascinating, you know, like uh, just, you know, overall cults. Are, well, are, uh, okay, it, I, you know, I'll go along with you. It is fascinating uh, that people will submit their will uh, to somebody with a lot of charisma like that. It is, it is odd, and it's kind of like people are giving up ev everything else in their life, their own... In essence, soul and willpower and everything else, and giving it to the leader of the cult, it's true. Yeah, it's, it's weird. crazy. Anyways, that's not why I called. I, I, oh. well, I do want to tell you uh, as a suggestion uh, sure. for a show. Sure. Uh, um, but, um, but yeah, no, um, you talk a lot about uh, uh, near death experiences, and you talk a lot about, you know, uh, life after death and consciousness, and definitely my favorite shows. You did a show a couple weeks ago with uh, a gentleman about um, um, past life progression. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, like, I've, I've listened to a lot of your shows, I listen to them all the time, and that to me was the most fascinating show. Um, and it uh, really opened my eyes a lot. Um, but um, I had a strange experience with. Um, you know, the whole, um, you know, out-of-body experience. Uh, I've listened to some of your shows where the, the people kind of explain how to do it. You know, you get in that meditative state, and you, um, you know, you kind of find yourself in, in a, a sort of trance where you feel this very, very strange vibration mm -hmm. where your consciousness kind of leaves your body. And it, it really freaked me out. But when it happened to me, it 
it clicked in. This is an experience I had when I was a very, very little boy. And I went and I, I you know, I talked to my wife about it, who, uh, who's, you know, she's a little skeptical. I talk about your show all the time with her and I'm trying to convert her, but I'm, it's work in progress. Anyways, um, I told her about this and she, she clicked in and, and she's like, I had that same experience when I was a kid, but I couldn't really describe it. Really? Um, very fascinating. So I'm like, I'm interested. Like, do other people have this experience? Like, it's a very strange feeling that you can't really explain where it's, it's vibrational is really the best way to describe it, where your consciousness and your body are like separate. And it's, it's really strange, but I think, you know, your viewers and your listeners, if they've had that experience when they were a kid, they know what I'm talking about. Well, um, I had, uh, Dr. Dr. Kunk, thank you. I had Dr. Kunku on the show the other night. And he admitted when I told him, I said, uh, Dr. Scientists have just verified lucid dreaming is real. And Dr. Kaku immediately, obviously up on the latest in science, said, that's right, Art, they have. You know, and just a few years ago, the concept of lucid dreaming was, <laughs> was something scientists laughed at, right? Oh, lucid dreaming, controlling your own dreams. <laughs> Show me proof. Well, now there's proof. Lucid dreaming is real. Uh, Dr. Kaku said so, uh, and I, knew, of course, knew about it before the program. It's a fairly recent science, but, uh, you know, when, when it does finally become proven, then a good scientist is willing to admit, well, yes, it's true. Let's go uh, outside the country and uh, to Michelle. Hello. Hello, Art. Hi. Hopefully it's not too loud. I am sitting outside on the patio at McDonald's uh, getting a late lunch on my way to go take a Christmas present for my mom to the post office. McDonald's in Tokyo, right? Uh, well, outside Tokyo, but yeah. Outside Tokyo. Do you know that McDonald's uh, in uh, the Philippines delivers... You, when you order uh, McDonald's... Oh, do they really? Oh, yeah. They, it, it goes in a keep-it-warm sack on the back of a motorcycle, and you got it in about 10 minutes. Yeah, a lot of places here do do that, but not McDonald's. I right. know some of the like local cafes and stuff do, and that kind of thing. You gotcha. can get ramen. They've got a ramen truck that's got this special metal case that goes on the back, and they can stack it up on the back of a motorcycle. And there you go. It's, it's crazy. So how's everything in Japan today? Uh, it's going all right. I'm about to send my mom an iPad for Christmas. She's never had an iOS device before. She's not listening, so. Well, uh, that's going to be a, a welcome surprise. I think she's probably going to love it. I hope so. She's always complaining about how she has to use her Mac to talk to me and all this kind of stuff, and I just thought, I'm going to make this easy for her. So, I'm, anyway. sure, I'm sure she will say, but honey, there's so many buttons. What I have done is I have made a video showing her how to use it and put it on a DVD to, with the package. That's the way to do it. That's yeah. That's that was my thought. So I knew as soon as she opened it, she's like, I don't know how to use this. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. No, the video is a very, very, very good idea. And of course, I recorded it with my iPhone. So <laughs> what a what a world. I know, right? Yeah, everything so, is. Uh, are you addicted to something? Well, yeah, actually, I am. And I've got two things I wanted to talk to you about. One of them is the addiction. Okay. I am addicted to collecting uh, video games, mostly video games from the 80s and 90s. Um, Good for you. I like those. I love them. And here in Japan, they've got tons of them, and they're real cheap because they don't really hold on to, to use to old stuff the way they do in America. Mm -hmm. In America, it kind of goes way up in value, and here it goes down in value. Really? So, okay. Yeah, so I've got about... Oh, 350 or so uh, old video games in my living room of my apartment, neatly arranged on shelves and everywhere. I would love and to have copies of some of those. I, My goodness. Yeah, and I've been recently getting into some old computer systems here in Japan as well, um, which they're all so, in Japanese, but that's part so of the fun. you're a hacker. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, so <laughs> what do you mean by getting into Oh, I see. Getting into is in the they're they're very old, like computers from the you know nineteen eighty seven. Just messing like with you. One, yes. Okay, and you fit, you have another category, Michelle? Uh, not another category. I actually wanted to mention to you about the uh, the sort of the, on the lines of the signal. Um, 
I've been doing a research project with my uh, English conversation class here in my school about um, students believe whether students believe in UFOs or aliens. We did a sort of a a survey on it, and the results were very very surprising. And even more was surprising were the number of people who said they'd seen one. Okay. And so um, we're putting that together. And maybe this is a question for Heather, but at some point, uh, our class runs at the same time as your show, and we'd like to see about uh, calling and just asking you a few questions. I would have no problem with that at all. Okay. Well, we're uh, like I said, it's on. We're, our class is on Tuesdays, and it's uh, on uh, around the last hour of your sh- of your show, I guess. Okay. And um, so we'll try and get that together. And I, uh, right now, I'm still getting on permission on my side. But it looks like it's going to go through, no problem. So. Tomo arigato. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, yeah, I, I would oh. look forward to that. Uh, try and pick your best English students. Uh, that's what this class is. It's some of my best English students. It, this is a mm-hmm. small, maybe six student class that uh, of our third year students who really enjoy English. So. Would you say, uh, Michelle, that? Um, um, English is harder to learn if you're Japanese, or Japanese is harder to learn if you're an American. I would say they're both equal, and the reason is because they're both so backwards to each other in terms of grammar and the way they function. They are um, indeed. You have to actually it, learn to think in a in a different way. People, you do. People don't you really know. do learn how to just think and talk in a completely different way. The Japanese actually read from the rear of a magazine or a book to the front, right? Right. Unless, well, when it's printed, you know, Generally. old-fashioned vertically way. Yeah. Uh, if it's printed in the, the sort of the Western way, it won't be, but... Uh, well, uh, you mean if it's in kanji? Uh, well, well, sometimes they, they'll, they'll print books. Uh, like, most books are printed, you know, vertically. Right. Uh, from, from right to left. Right. But if they print books horizontally, yes. say if it's an instruction manual for something, sure. or something like that, then it'll be from left to right so it makes it like doubly backwards because there's two different writing systems it it does Uh, that's exactly right All right, Michelle thank you so much and I'll look forward to hearing from one of your students um, I guess on uh, on Tuesday that should be uh, actually that's kind of interesting that should be kind of fun and it is such a very different culture the Japanese culture that yes uh, as you begin to integrate with it you have to actually begin to think of everything in a in a very sort of different reverse way even socially it's it's kind of an opposite and, and listen i want to remind people i've seen several on the international line and for that matter the uh, the, the national skype line if i don't answer right away just redial just continue to redial if you begin to hear my audio if you hear the show that means guess what you got through so hang in there, and I will get to you. It's a free call, so you can afford to wait a little bit. Let's go to uh, Roswell. Uh, Roswell, really? Um, you're on the air. No, you're in Montana. Hello? Hello? Yes? Hello, Art. I'm going to quit trying to identify where people are, because I only get part of it, and I keep guessing. Where are you actually? I am in Montana. Montana. Okay, very good. KG7? Uh, oh, no, KG? don't don't give your old call. Don't do that. That identifies your address, so don't do that. Oh, copy that. Well, I, I called in to, uh, to tell you about my addiction, and it's always been radio. Oh, well, boy, I get and, that one so totally. You know, it started out with transistor radios years ago, and late night I'd always try to see how far I could receive something. And just recently, I got my ham radio license. And uh, it's opened up a whole new thing to me. And, uh, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited about it. A whole new addiction. <laughs> yeah. And trust me, <laughs> it, it can, ham radio can turn into a serious addiction. addiction. <laughs> I understand that. And uh, when I get, I look at these catalogs and I see, uh, you know, the price of rigs and antennas and what my friends want to get me into that I've just started to uh, 
get into. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of worried about it, but I'm very excited about it. And I've, you know, I've listened to you for years and years. And I know you're a amateur or a ham radio operator, and uh, I'm really excited about the whole thing. Well, then I may catch you on the bands one of these days. I am indeed on the air, so there you go. Wonderful. Okay. So it's uh, a pleasure yeah. to talk to you, first-time caller, and it's an honor to talk with you, my friend. Thank you so very much, and take care. Um, yes, ham radio is, even in this modern day and age of iPhones, I've got one, wouldn't be without it. But it's not the same as ham radio. I mean, you can sit down after you get your license. Yes, you have to study a little bit. But you can sit down at a table with a radio and with an antenna outside. And you can talk to people all around the world who have an interest now similar to yours. It is a very, very exciting hobby. So I can't stress strongly enough look into it really look into it let's go to um i guess virginia hello hi art this hi. is uh class Bond. i'd like to give a shout out to uh debbie the wise owl and the rest of the gang at midnight fans uh, Way to go. uh group Way to go. and uh i'm listening on w t w w uh shortwave uh 5085 kilohertz nice segue and, um you know, I am really um, having to rethink uh, how much this program, since it started on July 20th, has got me spatially challenged in trying to uh, assess all the incoming communication. <laughs> and and I think the only way to do it now is to have a, a lucid dream and go into a out-of-interplanetary body experience and perfect that so that I have the vision coming from all directions, 360 degrees spherical, so I can keep one eye on Tabby's star, well, the one eye on all the stars, actually. I'm the one one eye on the uh, the source coming from another galaxy that the Parks Observatory is picking up, and my home star, of course, in the Pleiades star cluster. Can you believe your home star in Pleiades, really? Right, I'm a libertarian <laughs> from the Pleiades star cluster. So okay. uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is, it, it is quite a, not just a coincidence, but an astonishing how much uh, interstellar traffic we're getting these days. Well, uh, consider, really consider, sir, consider in the last month we've had two really hot hits uh, in this area that we haven't had in decades and decades. I mean, it is really exciting. It, it is, and, and if if we're going to have any more of these, we're going to have to start you know, assessing the way we deal with with communication traffic among uh, planets and stars. Yes. And don't forget, I'm still keeping a very close watch on this Martian crab thing, which has a bellows-like lung to compress the CO2 on, on, uh, uh, on Mars, which is only 1% of the pressure of Earth. Have and you, can... by any chance, sir, seen the dome on Mars that we've got on our website? I haven't looked at that, but oh, I shall God. now that you've mentioned it. Please, um, by all I, means. I mean, this thing has going. got to be artificial. It's got to be. I'm seeing so much, uh, so many car parts and in, in, in assembled objects that you know you, you just got to wonder: was there a civilization there before it was impacted? Whatever you know, tore up one half of Mars. Was there a whole civilization there? Certainly possible. Um, it seems that way. Uh, but the fact of the matter of looking at this this Martian crab, this thing that's got a bellows for lungs and then injects the CO2 into an algae um, uh, reactor where it then makes oxygen, and instead of breathing out the CO2 like we would do, it just puts it back and recycles it through the bellows lung. Mm -hmm. This is something that, that really teaches us how to be a Martian. Well, it, it doesn't sound like right now anyway, life as a Martian, as it were, would be easy. Wouldn't be an easy life. It'd be dreadfully cold and you know very low pressure. If you ever lost pressure, it'd be just the same as being out of space. Your, your blood would just boil. It's only one percent pressure. Yes. But maybe terraforming over time is a possibility. We could certainly learn if there's a real if that crab is a real creature and it's a living thing. Observing that could teach us a lot about Martian biology and how to maybe to adapt to human species. Well, yes, what, yes. What was lost, uh, thank you, can be found again or created again. I too think that eventually, uh, Martian um, atmosphere can be restored. I think it can be done. 
and I hope it uh, becomes within our ability to do. I really do. Because we may need a place to go. The way we're treating Earth, we may need a place to go. Outside the country, you're on the air. Hello? Hello, Art? Yes, hello. Yeah, hi, it's Mark in Switzerland. Hey, Mark. I have an addiction. And that would be? I love to ride Swiss trains. It sounds like you're in a Swiss laboratory at the moment. Yeah, I'm... I'm Big in echo. The, in, in the basement, actually. Are you? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm sorry, no, I, I missed your addiction. What was it? Riding Swiss trains. Oh, I totally get that. I, it must be awesome, especially up in the mountains, huh? Yeah, it's fantastic. And you can buy a yearly pass, and then you can ride indefinitely. Wow. Without limit. That does sound like fun. Uh, one of the best things I did in my entire life, uh, Mark, was to ride from Vancouver to Niagara Falls, almost. Well, not, you know, on the Canada side. Ah, cool. So the train actually moved. Oh, my goodness, yes. It, it went right over the Canadian Rockies, and that really was an experience. That's fantastic. But the, the, fantastic. Alps, the Alps has got to be pretty good. I have to talk about the signal. This is very exciting. Yeah, please go ahead. I think this is uh, could be a very exciting uh, day to prove to us that we're not alone. It could. Uh, we've got two big hits in the last month, Mark. Uh, Tabby Star that remains as much a mystery as the day they announced, and now possibly a signal that they describe as big as the wow signal from Australia. And is there going to be some follow-up news on this? Damn well, better be. Good. And I, I hope to hear it. I expect to hear it on your show. Well, okay. Um, you can depend on hearing it uh, here. Mark, uh, no question about it, but you know, it's the Parkes Telescope in Australia, so this is more than, you know, some minor matter. It, it's not yet in the bigger media, but I'm thinking it will be. Cool. I uh, will stay tuned, Art, and I wish you a good weekend. You have a great weekend, uh, Mark, all the way from Switzerland. So if you're outside the country and you want to talk to us, no problem. Skype is free. Absolutely free. Just download Skype, put in MITD55, and no matter where you are in the world, one click, and here we are. It's that simple. Let's go. Ooh, let's go to our special line. Hello there. Hello there. Hi. All right. Oh, wonderful. You're, you're obviously calling uh, for one of four reasons. What are my reasons? Well... I might have had an ulterior motive here. Really? You yes, mean, I did. You mean like sneaking in on a line that you weren't supposed to call? No, I couldn't remember what numbers I was supposed to call, so I pushed the redial from last uh, night before last. It, that's it, it rang, so I said, hot diggity. I hope I got the right line. This is bad, because this oh, is, well, I mean, I can test you if you would like. Okay. You may qualify under one of these possibilities. Okay. Okay, so we have the weird addiction line. Do you have a weird addiction? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got that for sure, and it's about you. Uh... I'm, addicted, I'm addicted to your soothing voice every night, and also hearing the temperature of the rest of the country out there as they call in and talk to you. All right. Hold tight. I'll come back to you because you sound like a good guy. I'm Art Bell. She's got something to Clock strikes 12, and Midnight in the Desert is pounding packets your way on the Dark Matter Digital Network. To call the show, please direct your finger digits to dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Listen, um, for all of these things, I, I just read stories that I get. I have no way of verifying uh, that Parks has indeed received this. Now, could this be a false flag story. <laughs> I've been waiting for the right time to use the phrase false flag. Yeah, could be, you know. We live in an information age, and a lot of it's really twisted. 
However, um, it does look like a, a valid story to me, so we'll see. Um, hi, on the phone, you're on the air. Oh, good. It's wonderful. Back, back on the air, actually. That's wonderful. Art, I wanted to take you back about four Lundstroms back in the day where we did a lot of faxing back and forth to you. I remember that. Oh, Lord. We had you bouncing around the Radio Shack one night, a handful of us out here in Radio Land. And it was when we were first talking about remote viewing and stuff like that, and you were adamant to the fact that you just were not too sure about it. It just, you know, and then one caller called in and said that he had re- remote viewed you there in the in your little radio. In your, oh, I, guess God, I remember bedroom. this, and I and I found something that I had lost, and um, I'll be no, damned. no, no, yes, yes. One. Well, that was one. Okay, oh, it may have been I, but the one that I was involved with. Is uh, is I sent you a fax real quick because I could never get on on my telephone line. I could right. never call you. Right. And so I sent a fax. Is okay. You pick an object, set it on the desk or on the shelf in front of you, and let us fax in pictures. We'll draw them up by hand of what that is. Mm-hmm. And you you looked around and then you found what was a picture of you inside a special. I forget the frilly type frame like a metal frame that saw that's right you remember that one i do and so i drew it up real quick and i sent it to you and the only thing i messed up is i was sure ramona was in front of you in a lower <laughs> level yes and i included her and then uh four other people sent in the same thing that's except right. they didn't I, I remember the frame. i remember and you were bouncing all over the room. It was so good. I was just thrilled. The wife was just, she was bouncing in the bedroom with me. Uh, and there was one uh, just as big as that, sir. Somebody, I had lost something. I can't remember what it was, but uh, it wasn't a tool, you know. And somebody said, open your closet, look in your toolbox, and I'll be damned if it wasn't there. I forget what the item was now, but it may have been my keys or something that I had lost, and it was there. So... No nope, away. That that still doesn't mean that you know I'm gulping the Kool Aid, but it does look like there's something to it. Well, you know, I I done this since I was a kid, and one of the my favorite things is is you take a few bounces down the road, and all of a sudden you're you're elevated and you're flying, and that is just wonderful dreaming. Fly anywhere you want to go, and uh, so when I started listening to you. I would just be so into listening to what's going on, I would find myself standing outside the window of that radio shack looking at your house. Uh And then one time I got in over in the corner. I think you got a monitor mounted up there now or something. Kind of creepy. Looking down at you. Hmm. And it was just so cool. And so (laughs) one time I went over to a a two-day thing in Las Vegas where Ed Dames was teaching this stuff. Yes. I thought, I'm going to get really good at this. I didn't like the way he taught it, so I left after the first day. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to take and come home because I live over by Sacramento. I'll come back through Death Valley, and I'll detour through Pahrump and see if I can't drive straight to where you live. By golly, I did. Mm-hmm. And I got to see your big antennas and oh, all yes. that stuff. Yes, yes. And oh, 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 those antennas. You said you had about 440 or something like that volts on them? Um, three, almost 400 volts, yes. Well, is there any appreciable amperage there? Not a lot, uh, but there's enough. Uh, it could be, um, I've, I've got to go, sir, regarding my antenna. It could be used. Let's put it that way. At the moment, I ground it. And I do that to protect my radios because that kind of voltage destroys radios. That's kind of how I found it. It destroyed a couple of my radios. So there is enough current that, uh, you know, it could be used to charge things. It could conceivably be stored and used. It's it's something that should be looked into. And for years, I have invited people, uh, somebody of substance, science, to come and do some measurements on the voltage on this antenna. It is really substantial and I want to know more about it, other than going out there and getting myself shocked all the time. So I would like to know more. I, I can tell you this, and this is intriguing for anybody who knows a little bit about uh, electricity and electronics. I have a big sort of Frankenstein switch so that I can turn, you know, actually disconnect the antenna and put it on ground during any storms. And 
I can sit there going click, 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 click that fast, uh, and I will get a giant blue spark every single time. So it's not like it has to build up. It's whatever it is, is always there. There's, uh, there's no recharge time for it, or at least none that I can see. And look at this. This message <laughs> says, The dudes at Belgab want to know how you like your coffee art. What is it about Belgab? Those vaguely lovable people have a disturbing interest in what I eat and what I drink. Disturbing. They bugged me one day until I finally told them what I had for dinner, and it's strangely unnervingly seem to satisfy them. My coffee black, always black, and why do you want to know these things? All right, to uh, to Skype we go. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, but you got to promise you'll believe me when I tell you. Well, I, I don't know if I can promise that. Now, you're calling on a laptop, right? Yeah. Okay. Try and get closer to the little hole in the top of the laptop where the mic is. Can, can you hear me now better? I hear you, yes. Okay. Because this isn't actually my computer, but I swear I'm a shapeshifter. Oh, good. Or something like that. All right. Um, so, so don't we... Let's take it one step at a time. This is radio. We've got a lot of time. You're able to shapeshift. What can you shapeshift into? I've... I've... Like a dog. Like, I, yeah, a dog. Are you a manly dog, like a German shepherd? Or? I, I, I think so. I have like a long, like a snout, and yeah, I'd probably say either like a mutt. Sometimes I've been a German shepherd, but not mainly like okay. mutts. Okay, like a mutt. All right. Um,. Does it happen frequently? Does it happen at night, full moon, or what brings it on? If I concentrate hard enough, because I because I was adopted by these by these real real mean people, and I live on a farm. And if I'm if I try hard enough at night, I can turn into a person. So I'm mostly a dog, and and I'm on the computer right now, and I'm trying to okay, trying so to find you're, answers. You're actually more dog than person. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm trying to find answers. Cause okay, I, well, one thing that everybody would want to know, and we all wonder what a dog's life is like. Well, you kind of just sleep. You, you wag your tail. Just. Yeah. Now, does tail wagging absolutely mean you're happy, or is it just sort of a reflexive action, you know, to any response? Both, I'd probably say. Okay. And how do you feel about cats? It all cat. Sometimes I can feel some like some negative energy, and I usually stay away from them. But some of them are are kind of nice. Okay. Um, most dogs wouldn't say that about cats. Um, generally, I think their their reaction is more negative than positive. Um. Let's see, what else can I ask you um, about a dog's life? I mean, you know, tell me. Well, half the day I'm usually trying to hide from my owners because I told you they're mean. really mean. Mean, yes. They're very mean. Yeah, some people are really mean to dogs. Yeah, I I just, just don't like them. I just okay. I try to run yeah, away, but they yeah. got a shot collar. It's just... Oh, yeah, I mean, what's that like, getting brought up short with a collar? Oh, that must be awful. On a chain, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. I, I've been trying to research how to how to, how to to take it off, but it doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, no. Uh, do you ever feel like, well, biting your owners? I feel like they would put me down if I tried, so I haven't. Put you down. That's the way to put it, I guess, yes. Hmm. Well, um, how about food? I mean, they s sometimes leave out table scraps, but I usually have to eat the gross dog food, and I don't, I'm not, I don't like it. So even as a dog, it's gross? It's, a, it's gross, but you got to eat or you'll die. Well, that's true. 
Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I can I can ask you. Um, I'm trying to be quiet because I don't want them to wake up and. And here you bad. admitting that you're their dog. That yeah. would, that's very worrisome. All right. Well, listen. I I wish I could on the spot think of more to ask you. Um, oh, but I can't. Oh God. What? They're coming upstairs. Uh, oh, you're gonna have to change. I got. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm sorry. I gotta go. See you later. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Well, it's Friday night, and I asked for it, right? The, the one thing I haven't heard yet is I hate Art Bell. I've got the weird addiction line. These, this one line carries all these things. Um, weird addiction line. I hate Art Bell. Soulless people. Somebody snuck in under that one. And shape shifters. And we just had our first shape shifter. If you are any of those things or want to talk about them, it is area code 575-208-7787. 575-208-7787. I was going to ask him about fire hydrants, but I thought, nah, that's rude. <laughs> right? First time caller line, you are on the air. Who? Cool. You. Me, you. Oh, goodness gracious! Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I was looking at your, uh, listening to the thing about the what is it, the things you're uh, addicted to. Yes. And I'm afraid I'm. Uh, oh, for since 1951, I got my amateur license, but before that. Uh, I was a kid bootlegging on the air. That wasn't very nice. But nevertheless, uh, I'm addicted to radio. <laughs> well, you know, I think, frankly, most people who begin in radio start bootlegging something or another. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done it. I admit it. And I think uh -huh. most people in radio have done that. Well, you know what? Uh, you know what? The, the I, I would probably have never gotten into it as deep as I am now. Uh, I used to work uh, on avionics for quite a while, mm -hmm. and uh, all most of the stuff is I never went to radio school. It's all been self-taught, and uh, I wound up uh, eventually working in uh, on deep sea ships mostly. Really? Yeah, on all the telegraph gear and uh, you know, in the radar, and you know, anything electronic on the ship on the bridge. And uh, it wound up being a... Uh-oh, you're starting to break up on us. Uh oh I'm breaking up on you. No, now you're really breaking up on us. I'm breaking up on you? Oh, goodness. Yep. Goodness gracious. A good radio guy will get to the bottom of that quick. <laughs> that, uh, well, I'm on some stupid little uh, one of these uh, uh, UHF wireless phones right now. So that might be what it is. Is this any better? Uh, well, it's understandable now, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was getting ready to say that I was away from the base unit. Nevertheless, uh, uh, I, I was in that for years, working for Marconi, then Mackey Radio, and uh, going all over the blasted world. But uh, I had a lot of fun. And I still have fun, and I've got too many radios now. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've got a bunch? Take a look at my picture. Thank you very much for the call. It is, without question, very, very addictive. And I've got a lot of radios. I've got radios stacked in my... My wife hates it. She absolutely hates it. She, she will not... You know, she is a woman of order, right? Everything in its place and a place for everything. And she will not even look in my closet. Rarely do I look in my closet. On our special line, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Yes, sir. I wanted to tell you that I, I, I hate Art Bell because there's never anybody on here who really explains the projection of the astral body correctly, and I'm here to help you with that. Okay. Um, all right. Go ahead. I, if I could leave you with anything, Art, in our brief conversation, is that 
the way to teach yourself to recognize your astral body is to auto-suggest to yourself that you are going to wake up in your sleep and you are actually going to look down and see yourself laying there. Now, when a person does this, you actually get very excited, and especially the first time that you do it, and maybe successive times that you do it, you will you will do a thing that is called repercussion, and it's when you just instantly go back to your body. Uh, as long as you're a physically alive person, you will always have this mechanism. It's a fail-safe mechanism built into your to the incidents when it happens and occurs that just takes you right back to your body. And it usually happens because the first time that you do it and look down and you're really conscious of what you're doing, you see your physical body and you get so excited that, like I said, you repercuss. Well, you know, this is a little bit of a false flag call because you don't really hate me. You just wanted to get in on this line to be able to say all that. Right, because I've heard so long now people that, and if I, I may say so, there's a, a very famous book that was written almost 100 years ago called The Projection of the Astral Body that was written in 1921 that goes over <laughs> all the terminology that they diagnose for right. the projection of the astral body. Also going into like where you could actually go into different times and... All right, well look, I, I, will, um, I will try what you have suggested. Thank you for the call, but really... You were sort of just abusing that line, frankly. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, very quickly, uh, let's go to Skype and say hello to Ryan. Uh, hello, Art. Hi. Uh, I'm up here in the state of Washington. Yes, sir. And let me mute my audio. There we go. Um, uh, I wanted to veer off track here for just a little bit. This whole, the whole show is off track. Don't yeah. worry. Um if there's anything I'm addicted to, it is uh, trying to find out more about the gray aliens, the the, the non-human EBEs. No, they're not necessarily the good ones. But uh, I, I just wanted to mention to the audience that uh, there are now credible uh, slides, credible video, a credible video. Sir, I'll tell you what. I've got a break coming up. Gray aliens, I'll hold you over. How's that? Okay. All right. Stay right there. Explored on Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. If using Skype from your computer, please be sure to use a headset mic and call MITD 51. That's MITD 51. Idiots. How you doing, everybody? Open lines, anything you want to talk about goes. And we've got a kind of a quad based line, special line tonight. Now, if you have a weird addiction, we want to hear from you. If you hate me, I want to hear from you, but it better be real hate. Soulless people are welcome to call that line, as are shape shifters. We had somebody barking at us there just a little while ago. The uh, number to call is area code 575-208-7787. 575-208-7787. Let's go back to uh, Ryan. Uh, you're back yeah. on the air, Ryan. Yeah, Art, uh, I was wondering if there's anybody in the audience that would like to view uh, credible, possible uh, images, slides, video of actual gray alien non-humans. Heck yeah. Okay. The good thing is is that all you have to do is go to artbell.com and look up Roger Lear's show and look at the material that he presented on his show that day. Dr. Lear. I happen to know quite a bit about this case. Uh, just just a little background. Uh, there was uh, seven people uh, that witnessed a dome-shaped silver metallic craft over the ocean near Turkey. Now, Roger Lear was there doing a, 
a conference, and uh, it's, it, he's photographed there. He was there. He saw it himself. And uh, Yeah, that's right. I know it occurred during the conference. I know what you're talking about. Right, right, right. So I just wanted to put that out there because uh, you talk about the, we talk about these subjects all the time. And uh, uh, I'm surprised that Turkey didn't warn it and try to shoot it down. Right. Uh, one thing that I found out about it is that uh, it happened over a fault line, which I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But one of the more interesting things about this video is it was actually filmed on mini DV cassette which is a physical film, and uh, it's not digital, so it's very, very hard to hoax, to uh, fake. A, uh, you'd have to slice it up and cut it up. And oh, yeah, I remember it occurred during a conference. All right, thank you very much for the uh, reminder. And he is right. Uh, the late uh, Dr. Lear did indeed uh, see and film exactly that. So you may want to look into it. All right, on our... Weird line with four possibilities. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi, Art. Um, I just wanted to say that I hate you. You hate me? Yes, sir, I do. Good. And, and the reason I hate you is because uh, since the early 90s, I have been absolutely addicted to your show and uh, lost sleep <laughs> over it yeah. all the time. I stay up all all night long and listen to your radio show. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. Yes, yeah, um, thank you. You're the, you're the, well, you're the best radio host, and I love you. And <sighs> it's awesome. All right, thank you. Uh, look, that is such a false flag four times now. If you're going to call the I Hate Art Bell line, for God's sakes, get up a, a little bit of real hate. Put Put some pizzazz into it. Don't use it just as a reason to get through. Yeah, I know it's easier to get through. And by the way, we will do, during the last ten minutes of the show tonight, people are asking for it. I've been doing it. So tonight we will do Fast Blast during about the last ten minutes. And that means everybody gets to call. You get about ten seconds, if you're lucky, on the air. Maybe a sentence. I felt I should explain Fast Blast. Maybe a sentence. So if if you have something you want to get across and it's really important, form it into a single sentence and get ready to say it during Fast Blast. All right? Let's go to uh, Kennewick, I think, Washington. Hello. That sounds like a Native American Santa. No, that was uh, my job with the hut impersonation. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show, anyway. Uh, hey, Arp. Um, well, I'd probably say I hate you for being on hold for two hours. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Um, I'm actually surprised that there hasn't been a lot of people talking about the uh, your top news stories about the first contact on the, the radio. That's like. Well, you crazy. know what, sir? I think, number one, it takes people time to absorb this. And they go read, and we've got to figure out if it's real. Um, it, it certainly sounds real. Uh, I'm familiar with that telescope. It's one of the biggies that look for this kind of thing. So, yeah, it could be real. I, You know, it's just there's a lot of reactions to this sort of thing. One of them is uh, negative. A lot of people either get scared or they don't know what to make of it. They, they have, it's something you've got to process. You know, I think it's, you know, in our mythos of, like, you know, what we try to determine what first contact would be like, it's always been, like, say, a physical presence or, like, aliens just are right. here. And then right. we have to figure out if they're hostile or benevolent. Right. But, I mean, here's, like, a kind of a third option where, like, maybe our first contact, if it is actually an alien civilization, will be long-range you know, radio signals or some other form of communication. Right. And then, you know, it's like when we, as humans, it's, I think it's easy to process aliens, um, especially if they're not really physically here and they're just out there. But what I always get curious is, like, if that was actually a radio signal where we actually intercepted some sort of communication and then begin to actually have real communications in whatever form that could be, like, I wonder what who would 
there be like a, a consensus of all the countries or would it be just Americans? And then, you know, once we get further, you know, invested communicating with these aliens and we further, you know, culture, I mean, right now, at least in America, there's so much like cultural upheaval. About right. Everyone. Well, you know what? There, you, yeah, this is so much overused, sir, but I do think this. I think that if it was a verified alien signal, that it would bring the world together to some great degree. Really? Yeah, I do. I really do. So I, think, I don't know. I think we're still in the... I don't think we're paranoid against aliens. I think we're paranoid against other countries. Because um, any communication that we have with aliens where it's radio, who's going to control that? And then you have, you know, all the... I mean, I know we have supposed and supposed allies around the world, but that's, you know, they're tentative at best. If some deal can be struck with, you know, an outside force with technology that will, that will give another country the edge. Well, okay, think about this. Think about how horrible it would be if we did get in communication with aliens and all they wanted to do was speak to Putin. <laughs> I know, or, or <laughs> some other country. You know, I mean, I'm not American-centric that it should be us. I mean, I think there's a, a huge chance that aliens come here and they look at America with, you know, a military force that's the greatest size of all the first ten countries combined and be like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, they, they might want to just speak to the Swiss. You could understand yeah. that. Or right. the Belgians or something. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm not... Still, oh, still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you were saying something. But, no, I would just, like, I would just think that... Uh, what I'm, what I'm really interested in is if we see a culture that is maybe has superior technology, but we do not like their culture or the way they handle themselves right. on their own planet, I would be surprised if there wouldn't be some pressure uh, to cease communications if we don't like the way in which their culture acts on their own planet. Maybe like there's, you know, two distinct gender groups, like a male and female, and one is like you know, like a, a really... Like you know, that's a pretty interesting question. What if we got in, in touch with an alien race and it was nothing but males or nothing but females? Yeah, that's interesting. They didn't even understand the concept. I mean, there is such a thing as uh, a reproduction uh, without uh, members of the opposite sex being available or needed. All right, well, listen, thank you very much for the call. That's a good point, actually, isn't it? Imagine that. If we encountered a race of beings that was different enough that they didn't require or didn't have an opposite sex, so there'd be a lot of things they wouldn't understand. Well, and I might add, a lot of things they wouldn't fight over. Cynthia, you're on the air. Hi. I have a um, couple of uh, addictions I'd like to share. Certainly. Um, my first is milk. And... Uh, Believe it or not, I spend more on milk than I do on tobacco every week. Really? Yes. Well, either you yeah. don't smoke a lot or you really drink lots and lots and lots of milk. Both. <laughs> I drink about three gallons a week. And how much do you smoke? Um, a Be six-ounce bag usually lasts me about three weeks. Did you say a six-ounce bag? Yes. Of raw tobacco? Yeah, and it lasts me about three weeks. So you roll your own? Well, actually, I smoke a pipe, but yeah. You smoke a pipe? Yeah. That's how I get away with smoking so little. How do people react to that? They think it's kind of strange that a female smokes a pipe. But... Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Oh, well. <laughs> That's life. Uh, it's also a strange addiction, so you qualify. Okay, another addiction I have is house plants. And uh my daughter tries to steer me away from any place that sells live plants. I understand. <laughs> They're all over the house. Yes. Um how many plants would you say you have? Um I don't have as much as I used to, but before I had kids I had over 100 plants in my apartment. 100 in an yes. apartment. Yes. Uh, that qualifies, totally. <laughs> Buried alive. And, and the other addiction is, since I was introduced to your program a few minutes ago, or a few months ago, um, 
I've been listening almost every night. Well, that's an okay addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Cynthia, thank you, and... Uh, have a good night. Keep on trucking and smoking, I guess. A pipe. That is pretty unusual. You don't see a lot of women smoking pipes, do you? Let's go to, um, well, back to our weird line. You're on the air. Hello. Is it me? It is you. Obviously. Okay, this is Fontaine. Howdy. And my addiction is to genealogy and then meeting the people that I find in history in my bloodline and having interactions with them in the dream time. Oh, really? So, in other words, you look I, people up, you, you, I find tra- them, right? you trace your lineage, and then you have a dream and meet them. Yes. And sometimes we get along and sometimes we don't. I guess that is part of lucid dreaming, huh? Um, well, it's part of dreaming. I don't know how I'd categorize it, but... Uh, well, no, 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 no. no. Lucid, lucid dreaming, dreaming means you can direct your own dreams. Yeah, but technically you're supposed to be able to do that before you go to sleep, and I don't do that. I just go, okay, uh, I'm going to dream tonight, and what is spirit going to bring me? And then if they bring me one of my dead ancestors, then we have an interaction. Okay. Well, it, it, in other words, I'm not I'm not saying I want to meet my dead ancestor tonight. It's like I'd like to, but I never know what they're going to throw at me when I dream. So, you know? Um, so but when they when they send the dead ancestor, it's like really cool. Do they? They don't actually throw things at you. Well, no, they. Well, I mean, your family. Uh, they do throw things at you. Like, um, Art, we could stay on the phone for hours if I told you everything. <laughs> so they do throw things at you. Um, sometimes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like one of the uh, like one of the uh, shadow people. And I had a positive experience with a shadow person, and uh, I'd love to talk to you about that some other time when we're not off topic. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's really fun. I have a big time in the dream time. But that, genealogy is fascinating. <laughs> I advise it for everyone. All right. I can't stop. When I start doing it, I can't stop. I time more when I'm doing it. Right. And I can't stop. That's an okay? addiction. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for the call. That's actually sort of interesting. She can uh, research her family tree, come up with something she'd like to talk to, and uh, and there you go. Strange. Amanda, you're on the air. Hi, Art. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Good. Uh, Three quick things. Yes. I may. Um, The first, I know the signals from space are very exciting, but there's another breaking story, and I thought you'd have more of a personal interest in it. And that would be? I think NASA found Abby Normal on Mars. <laughs> yes, I know. I've seen the photograph. It does. It does look like a mouse. Absolutely. Does it look like Abby? Oh, I don't know. A mouse is a mouse is a mouse. Oh, I thought there was a personal connection. Okay. Mm. Um, second thing. Whose idea was it for the do you hate me line? I don't know. Somebody, I, I asked for ideas earlier. On Facebook, and somebody suggested that one, and I thought, why not? Oh, so I was wondering if maybe you thought your stalker was that stupid, or maybe hated you that much that uh, huh. maybe it was a trap. Ah, uh, no, it's not a trap. Okay. I and, thought uh, maybe, you know, maybe people hate me, would like to express it, and so why not? Well, I think a lot of people hate your stalker, so, you know... We can goad him into maybe revealing himself. We'll go get him. <laughs> All right. And the uh, third? The last thing is my strange addiction. Oh, ah, yes. Addiction. Uh-huh. Um, and, again, it started shortly after your return. Yes. And it's to uh, your wonderful fan group on Facebook, our Bell's Midnight in the Desert. I'm addicted. I must be there every night. I get depressed if I fall asleep for one of your shows and miss it. Uh, the wonderful, intelligent, insightful people. And uh, back in the day, I know you don't like these stories, but back in the day when we were all younger, I used to listen to you. And people in my area just, you know, maybe they'd be asleep or not interested, but I, I knew there were people all around the world listening and thinking about the things you were saying and dreaming along with you and everything. But now that you're back with social media, it's so interactive and it's, 
it's such a wonderful community, and uh, thank you. And and it's a wonderful addiction. I'm I'm glad I'm hooked. All right. Well, thank you, and thank you for the uh, the plug. I'm more than happy to have uh, everybody plug, you know, the social site that they're on. There are so many of them, quite a few of them, actually, that uh, sort of chat along as we do the program. So if you have one and you want to plug it and you're part of it, do it when you're on the air and you will do nothing but grow your group, right? Why not? Hello there on our strange line. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Art? I'm very well, thank you. Um, well, I don't, uh, I don't know how to put this. Um, I'm not a shapeshifter, hmm. but I have had an astral projecting person come in my home. So you've had somebody astrally projecting show up at your home. Yes, sir. And could you see visually see them? Did this occur during a dream? Were you awake? How did it manifest? I was, I was wide awake, and the electricity in the room became so powerful. I actually I thought an angel was going to manifest. Is what I thought because it was so powerful. My cat completely freaked out. It certainly wasn't an imagination. Yep, cats know. Yeah. yeah. So what did this astrally projecting uh, person do? Uh, they were probably here to curse me. Oh. Mm-hmm. To harm me. Well, that's not good. No, it really wasn't. But um, I'm very protected. I have to tell you that uh, I am a um, an active intercessor, spiritual warrior, and um, so there are certain people that might try to. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're a spiritual warrior, I'm sure you dispatch them quickly. Actually, I think it was the angels. I can't take any credit for it at all. Well, an angel uh, wouldn't be there to curse you, uh, unless we really, really misunderstand angels. But according to everything I've ever seen, they're supposed to be uh, kind, soft, loving, what have you. First time caller line, you are on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. Can you hear me? I hear you. Hi, this is Sunny. I actually tried to call earlier on Skype, and I had some technical difficulties. It happens. <laughs> yes. Well, um, you know your uh, the alien contact that we may have possibly made? Yes. I think I might know who that is. And that would be? Art, it's the Sayrays. The Sayrays? They're applying. The They're giving us a sign. <laughs> ah, the Sayrays, yes. <laughs> that was a great show. <laughs> um, could I plug a group really quick? Uh, you can. Sure, it's uh, Art Bell Sands on the cover of the night. Lark and Walken runs it. She's awesome. Everybody in there is pretty awesome. The name of the and group one more time, please. Sure, Art Bell Sands on the cover of the night. All right. Yes. How many? How many of the? How many of you are there? Uh, let me check really quick. Well, I mean, typically. Um, oh, it's a handful. It's actually a pretty small group. Um. But there are a few regulars, probably about 10 or 12 regulars. Okay. Well, then you may grow the group. Yes, absolutely. And I've just recently started wa- or listening to your show, and it's fantastic. Mm. I'm absolutely hooked. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Yeah, plug your groups. Some of them are really big with hundreds, if not thousands, of members, and some of them are small and just beginning. Little seeds that, you know, have a water, little water and a little sunshine, and they grow and they grow and they grow. So, happy to have you plug when you can get through. Let's go to uh, Bill on Skype. Hi. Hey, I didn't expect that. i got to get my pistol down. Hang on. What? Okay. All right. Run all that by me again. <laughs> I have. 
Uh, let me see. Okay. We're, now, when you had that sex on that guy. Bill, you're kind of breaking up on us here, buddy. About now. Still breaking up a little, but go ahead, try it. All that guy wanted was for people to say, you. <laughs> I, I I hate the fact that people called up and disrespected him so much. Uh, there's we have all the proof that we're going to get. Well, I we, look. I don't think that um, asking for proof is disrespect. Well, we have all the proof we're going to get. Is is my opinion. I mean, we have video, but like you say, you know. We can fake them too good. Nobody's going to believe them. We have documentation, but they've been redacted. Why would they redact? Why would people redact all that? Um, Richard Richard Dolan even. You all know, right. Let, let, let me stop you. Since, you. since you have said we have proof, what proof? What is What, what proof has been redacted? Um, how many documents from NASA has been redacted? A guy that uh, NASA tried to pay to write a book proving they went to the moon actually gave the advance back because NASA wouldn't give him the evidence to prove that we went to the moon or what they showed us we went to the moon. Uh, but, uh, again, that's good proof. Pardon? I think that's good proof. Something redacted is proof? Oh, am I still breaking up? No. Oh, because I just explained that, I thought. Um, no, all the, okay, the gentleman that was going to write the book to help NASA prove that what they showed us was live. Yes. Okay. But all the documents that he kept getting to go in their favor redacted. were redacted documents, and he couldn't do anything with them. So he gave the advance back. Okay. To me, stuff like that, and, I mean, we could talk for three days about stuff that's funny, all the way from, you know, Carter with his hands, you know, sobbing in his, uh, at his desk. I mean, I don't know what it is that's so bad, but I thought the gentleman the other night, I thought he really was onto something, and he wasn't asking anybody well, maybe, to Well, maybe, maybe he was. Who knows? But, uh, you know, it is within the right of callers on this show to say, hey, give me some proof. I'm sorry I'm not buying it. This is an open show. You know, they can either buy it or not buy it. We just present we don't uh, i can't guarantee what callers are going to say just like i can't guarantee what you're going to say yeah i understand that i don't know maybe i just felt a little like he was disrespected but anyway you wanted some true hate and i i couldn't get i didn't know what the number was so i'm trying to pretend like i hate you I'm oh i'm giving you my best shot <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you very much for the call you're welcome and, uh, night, Art. and you have one as well yeah, yeah um look this is a different kind of program. The calls we have, as you know, are not screened. I don't control, nor do I try to control, what the callers say. If they, you know, if their BS meter is going off the scale, they have a right to say so. And, uh, and I'm not going to stop that. That's all I can say. It's an open talk show. Hello there. You're on the air. Hey, Art. How's hey. it going? It's going well. Thank you. Hey, I've been uh, listen, listening to you for a long time, and I've called in a few times. Um, but uh, something recently uh, jogged my memory. I wanted to ask you about it, and I haven't really seen any updates on it online. I check in every so often, but it's the John Teeter uh, occurrence. Oh, yes. That I was wondering if there's anything new about him. Absolutely not. Place. John Teeter is not poked his head into 2015 yet that I'm aware of. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of, I guess it wouldn't be an addiction, but it's kind of a little obsession with mine is that whole thing that happened with him and back in, was it 2000 and 2001? Right. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, if, I just had you know, I mean, if you're asking if there's any, anything new, no, there's not. Uh, but yeah, it was a really interesting occurrence. Me. It's something that keeps me coming back to that every so often. To okay, well, keep out. coming back. If I if I hear from him, uh, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> All right, All right Art. thanks a lot. We'll get Thank it on the air. You bet. Uh, outside the country on Skype, you're on the air. Hello, Mike. 
Hello. Hi, you are there. I am here. Yeah. Okay, good. Where <laughs> Sorry, are you? Where are you, right? Mike? Where are you, Mike? I'm in Northampton in UK. Okay, very good. What's up? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, this uh, fast radio bursts. The, I'm sorry? Uh, what was that, Mike? Uh, yeah, the news story you have. Yes. About fast radio bursts. Uh, Burst from yes. Australia. Yes. Yep. Um, this has been uh, debunked already. Already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was caused by a microwave oven. No, no, Mike. The old uh, one of the old signals that was associated with that same sort of fast burst was in fact debunked uh, as microwave ovens being opened prematurely. That's in the yeah. article. That's yeah. in the article, but not in this new one. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I've been educated. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for the call. They mention it, uh, as a matter of fact, in the article, that the one of the older signals that they thought they had that was really good was debunked. And it was, in fact, people opening microwave ovens too quickly. That sent out a signal on, what, 2.4? Big signal on 2.4. That's where that radiation is. Okay, folks, coming up on a break. We'll be back in about seven. in the desert to call the show if you're east of midnight call 1952 call art if you're west of midnight call 1952 225 5278 that's the way it's done don't forget we're going to end up the show tonight with fast blast and that means i'm going to open up all the numbers for anybody you can call up and issue one fast sentence that gets your point across your emotion your gut feeling, and do it really quickly, and we'll just run through a lot of calls. So that'll be all the lines involved. Uh, the national line, of course, 952-225-5278. First-time caller line, area code 775-285-5800. Or the weird addiction line. I hate RPL line, soulless people line, and shapeshifter line, all combined at 575, the area code, 208-7787. That's 575-208-7787. But we're not into fast blast yet. First time caller line, you're on the air. Hi. Hello, Art. Hi. Hi. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I've been listening to you for about 20 years, and it's the first time I've called in because I thought it was something of paramount importance. Okay. All right. So I kind of wanted to call in on the soulless person line, but I thought that I do have my moments of soul. But for the most part, I live in total ambiguity. Well, Um, you say you have moments of soul? Moments of soul. Uh, it, it all started about 18 months ago. I was just at work. Uh, I'm currently self-employed, but at one time I worked for somebody else. Uh, I came home and started to have a lot of different symptoms. Symptoms that were unexplainable. Like what? Uh, forgetfulness, tremors in my hands. Um, 
a lack of the ability to sleep, uh, restlessness, uh, anxiety. That doesn't sound like a soulless experience. That sounds like a go-to-the-doctor experience. Well, uh, at the end of the 18-month period of time, I was mindless. Completely That's mindless? Mindless, like a block of clay in my head. Okay. Yes. Uh, the doctors looked at me. They couldn't come to a conclusion. Uh, I went to an ophthalmologist. My eyelids were all swollen and puffy at the uh, eyelash line. And then I found out that someone had come in during the day and installed a smart meter on the other side of my headboard of my bedroom. Smart meter? Why would that be yeah. inside? Oh, you mean it was outside? Smart. Yeah, the electric meter that registers the usage of on the house. So that, are you uh, suggesting that the smart meter stole your soul? Yeah, it puts out uh, borderline microwave frequencies that my head was 36 inches from. And I now have, I can barely drive to Walmart now. God. That is a disability. Well, I don't know what to say. Um, have you called the electric company to complain? Yes, I have. And what uh, what did they say? I mean, I'm sure you said, look, your meter is just on the other side of my bed, and it's taken my soul, and I want it back. Well, the reason I say it has made me soulless is because I have trouble putting thoughts together, and if I'm watching a movie that's really good and everybody in the room thinks it's really good, I just walk out and, <laughs> yeah, uh, just kind of uh, in my own little dialect. But uh, I wanted to let you know that they did say that there was an opt-out that was able, because there were so many complaints of people saying that they had different effects from the microwave pulses that go on continuously with these meters. And I didn't know anything about it. I thought a smart meter was just something that transmitted the the usage over the the hard wire lines. That is the idea, yes. Yeah, and then I Actually it transmits it. through the air. Yes, I believe, yes. yes. Right through my brain. Uh huh. I get it. All right. Well I'm I'm sorry to hear it. And I'm glad that you were able to opt out. Now I don't know that that means you got your soul back. Uh Doctor Strange, hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, okay, sir. Um, remember when you asked for it to rain, and you asked your fans to help? When what? I'm sorry. Uh, you asked your fans to make it rain in a certain area. Oh yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to tell you that don't you worry about the shadow people or anything like that, or the people in your backyard creeping around, because your fans and I are all 100% behind you, <laughs> sir. Very kind of you. By the way, the other host that tried that, it didn't work so out so well for him. Um, <laughs> no, huh? No rain? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, my story, what I called about, uh, is about uh, Lake Erie Monster. Okay. So when I was a child, I was uh, uh, fishing with my dad, and he was doing a uh, project for Public Works Canada on Lake Erie. This is on the Canadian side, right? Okay, real quick, because we have to go to... Okay, Blast anyways, Blast. we saw this thing, and it looked like it was spiraling. Like, uh, I thought it was dolphins jumping, but I was 11 years old. Sure. Uh, the fisherman beside me looked at it and dropped his fishing pole into the water because he was so shocked. Like, this thing was out at the, the distance when it goes gray into the far distance, like when you see an oil tanker out there. Right. But it was coiling, a uh, coiling around, and you could see the coils of this thing, like, going through the water. So this is huge. Sounds like that thing on the commercial that picks up the golfer. Oh, I knew you were going to make a joke out of this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. I mean, that's kind of what you're describing. Well, it, it was huge, though, Art. And uh, it was a, a sighting that many people saw it, and we, it was very shocking to us. It was some kind of a serpent creature on the you know, way out there, and um, there's all kinds of Indian legends uh, from the natives that say that it'll take the children in, and we have a lot of people missing. Uh, 
you got to watch out for the undertow. They say it could be the undertow, but could well, be the monster. Could be you know? the monster as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it, there is a commercial, I'm sure you've all seen it, where the, the golfer is grabbed. And Anyway, here comes Fast Blast. Now, what I'm going to do is just keep taking calls as quick as I can. Are you ready? Hello there. You're on the air. Hey, Art, I was wondering what your favorite film of all time is. Contact. Hello there. You're on the air. Mr. Zulitsky had the right idea. Who? Zulitsky, regarding the Cuban city. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, thank you. You're on the air. Hello. 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 It's the porn. Uh, something about porn. That was silly. Hello there. You're on the air. Hey, Art. Uh, you hadn't mentioned anything about your Abby the Mouse video. There's been so much current events going on, and it got moved down on your page. Um, I, I don't know what you mean by my Abby the Mouse video. The, 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 the video. There's a video of you. It's a cartoon video of you sitting there. Oh, 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 oh. You're talking about the animation that that, that guy did. Yes. Um, yes, it's very funny indeed. So, yes, there you have it. Uh, thank you very much, and, and go see it if you can. It's, it is done on my uh, website. All right, so Fast Blast is underway. The public number to get involved is 952-225-5278. The other number, 575-208-7787. And finally, 775-285-5800. You're on the air. Hello. Yeah, um, I have a story for you. Um, I'm actually half demon. You're a half demon? Yes, I'm half demon. Well, that I have um, to pause for. I'm, all right, so um, have you been half demon all your life? Since I was five years old, actually. What's it like to be a demon? Um, actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, I've actually found that when I get uh, really angry, my my eyes actually will turn like really, really dark red. The whites of my eyes turn really dark red. That's very and disturbing. Then, <laughs> and sometimes I actually start to grow horns. All right. Well, I've got to... Really? Uh, you've actually grown horns? Yes, I have. I've had people come up to me and say they've seen me actually with horns and the red eyes. Um... You know what? Have somebody get a picture of that, and for goodness sake, get it to me, all right? <laughs> all right. All right, thank you. I, I've got to keep moving. Uh, Kyle, you're on the air. Hi. Boy, we are in a strange time period, aren't we? Yes, we are. Is that it? Uh. That's it, I guess. Okay, you're on the air. Hello. Hard. Yes. I haven't talked to you since 1998. Uh, with Bud Hopkins on Dreamland. Okay, real quick, sir. We're in Fast Blast. Uh, football, what do you think? Uh, I think that the Green Bay Packers had a heartbreaking loss. Absolutely. I could not believe the Bears did that last night. Oh, they were right there, right there. i got to go. Uh, Fast Blast, you're on the air. That's you. All right. This is Tracy out in Florence, Colorado. Hey, Tracy. I just wanted to tell you that we love you so much and so glad to be on the air with you tonight. Thank and you. And our dogs and cats love you, too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good to know, Tracy. Thank you. Uh, hello there. You're on the air. Going once. Going twice. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Art, this is Dan. I'm in Davis, California, 5085. It's sobs okay. on the radio. Yes. Please. Move up a mega cycle. Move up a mega cycle. You'll come in better. <laughs> Thank you. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Everybody save America. Register to vote next year. Way to go, sir. That's the way you do it. Hi, you're on the air. Long live Mahatma Gandhi. Way to go. Uh, you're on the air. Hello. 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 Yes, that's two hellos. Oh, yeah. The best interview would be Art Bell interviewing Jim Mars. Jim Mars. Well, I think that can probably be arranged. Thank you. You're on the air. Hello. My son is listening to you from heaven. Aw. Uh, thank you very much. And maybe it's get, maybe we're getting a signal there. Who knows? Hello. You're on the air. I have the love of the Lord in my heart. 
How dare you, Mr. Bell? Oh, my God, it's you. It's you, isn't it? No, it is not I. <laughs> okay, that's not going to work. Hello, you're on the air. The X-Files, I still want to believe. Ah, uh, well, the X-Files will be back for you to see soon. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hey, I just rolled a nat 20. I got these plus three leather boots of engagement. <laughs> Come on, stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hi, Art. Can Hi. I put in a plug? A big pardon? Can I put in a plug, please? Of course. Plug away. Oh, I, I'm with the best group, and I'm addicted to them, and they are Dino's group. Um, at Art Bell, um, in uh, oh my God, I'm screwing up. I'm so nervous. Okay, Art Bell, into the night, and we all love you there. <laughs> Thank you Yay, very much. I got in. Yay! Bye. <laughs> okay, Skype, you're on the air. Hi. Art. Yes. We need to have an evil laugh competition. <laughs> 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 You're on the air, hello. For drinks, you're back. <laughs> oh, my. You're on the air, hello. Hello, going once. Going hello, twice. Yes, hello. Yes, uh, quick question. Yezu, Kenwood, or Icom? Yezu. Awesome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Did I sell a soul to the devil on a Ouija board to become the greatest radio show host ever? And if so, would he tell us? Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Give he, me, don't give me whole names. No. He, all right. Well, he studied with uh, Jane Roberts of the Seth material. Uh-huh. And uh, hopefully we'll get in contact with you. He's He'll make a great guest. He's been teaching the material for... Okay, well, get a hold of my years. producer, and that's a way to do that. You're on the air. Hello. Hello? Hello. Hi, Art. Yes. Hi, my name's Molly. Yo, Molly. Uh, uh, I just had a crazy story um, I wanted to talk about. Very, very, um, we're in fast happens. blast here, Molly. We don't have time for a whole story, but thank you. You're on the air. Hello. Art. Yes. Thanks for another epic evening. <laughs> Listen, these reptilians, yes. some of them of our neighbors, you know, disguised as humans, they're eating dog feces. And all we need to do is watch the kids' movie, Despicable Me, mm -hmm. and it'll explain everything. I don't miss any kids' movies. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm a level four wizard. You are. I have, I'm, I'm predicting. Um, well, I guess we lost him. You're on the air. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, hello, Art. Yes, go ahead. Proceed. Hey, Art. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout-out to all the DM, DM talkers on Twitter, uh, Rochelle, Jeff, Paul, you know, the whole gang, and say uh, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. That's the way to do it. Thank you. You're on the air. Hello. Art, I have a strange addiction. Yes, strange and unerrable. Hello, you're on the air. Yellow. Hello. Hey, Art, I just want to say, uh, I don't think my girlfriend has a soul because she won't let me get the truck I want. But uh, go Viking. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you very much. Take care. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Art, this is Perry from Clovis. Hello, Perry. California. Yes. Hey, um, you know, I would. I think you would enjoy uh, interviewing the titanium physicists. Um, Who would that be? Podcast. These are a bunch of uh, doctors uh, teaching at universities all over the United States, and uh, they have a podcast where they talk about physics and 
All right. Well, I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up. Thank you. You're on the air. Hello. Mark? Yes. I'm pretty sure you've heard of Black Eyed Children. I have, yes. Black Eyed Children, very familiar. Hey, well, I'm a shapeshifter. You are? Yes, sir. And what do you shift, I, uh, shift into? No, no. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello. Hey, Art? Yes. Hey, could you tell me to turn my radio down, please? Turn your radio down, please. All right, thanks, sir. That's all I needed. Wait a minute. No, I need some. Can you help me out? No, I guess not. Hello there. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, do you think that it would be possible to get an interview with Mr. Hawking? With who? Uh, Stephen Hawking. Oh, Stephen Hawking. Well, that would be tough, as you can well understand, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. Very difficult. Well, anyway, I love Fast Flash. Keep it going, man. All right. Thank you. And hello, you're on the air, and I'm about out of time. Hello? No? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. These nuts. Hello? No, I guess not. Well, let's see. Who should we give the honors to? Uh, I think it's Rory. Rory, would you like to say goodnight to all 25 time zones? All right, I would love to say goodnight, but there's something i got to say first. Very quick. Earth, there are spooky skeletons trapped inside all of us. Art, I'm so sorry. I have to go. Good night, everybody. i got to get this skeleton outside of me. <laughs> Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's it, folks. All the, all the time we have from the high desert, the great American Southwest. Thank you, and good night. See you Monday.